Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome! Alright, I'm going to do another paper build here, and this one's going to be totally different. So, bear with me on this one, and quick precursor, I am not sponsored by any of these uh, companies that are involved, and I have not dealt with all of them yet, but I like what I see, and I'm going to put this out there. Um, I've been wanting to do kind of a pimped out build, where it's just kind of over the top and it just you see this and it's like holy hell what what is that you know that kind of build and to get started with the components that are going to be used in this build are to keep in mind with a certain budget level but then the budget's going to kind of expand from there once it's together because of things like the final finish and so forth but let's go ahead and get into the parts really quickly and for the lower receiver and these are all going to be 100 percent lowers they're not going to be 80 percenters um, anything of that nature you can go that route if you wish with this same company here hellfire armory out of uh, wilmington north carolina so uh, what is it it is a now the pictures on the website do not represent it being a 100 percent they still show the same picture as their 80%, so keep that in mind as well. Um, so you will have, as a 100% lower, you will have the hole cut for the trigger and for the rest of your fire control. So those, those holes will be there. Alright, so with this lower, it is a larger beveled magazine well, and this is one of the main reasons is because you can get it in raw, you can get it Cerakoted, or you can get it in a bead blast finish. And I would choose to go with the bead blast finish. It's going to add another $5 to the price point, but $5, you know, for someone to, to media blast it, yeah, it's worth it. Okay, so it's an oversized trigger um, well here. So wintertime, you got gloves, things that, like that, whatever. You can put gloves on and shoot. Um, a larger magazine well and kind of a mag funnel there are some other benefits to this lower um, showing coming with the allen key and these two pieces here um, this one right here uh, and this one right here this right here is going to be for your magazine uh, I'm sorry your, your bolt release so it is a screw instead of the usual pin that you've got to drive in and and take it you know you, once you've done a few dozen lowers, you can do them without scratching them, but there's always that chance of scratching your lower. Uh, I like to actually take business cards and tape them onto the side or just put black electrical tape because it's thicker and it's a bit more slippery. Use your, your you know, that kind of stuff. But you don't have to go that route. This right here, you're going to have this pin right here that's going to go inside and be the shaft portion and the threaded portion so you basically just thread this in and there you go um, this little one right here the small grub screw actually replaces or goes into the back of the receiver for your takedown pin and for anybody who's taking their stock off of their AR they know that once you, you take the stock off of an A2 style or you take off the um, the the back plate cover you've got that spring and detent that's there for your uh, your rear takedown pin. What this does is it's threaded into the back of the receiver and you shorten your spring a little bit if it does not come with a spring and then you know you put your, your detent in your of course your, uh, your takedown pin, your detent, then your spring you thread this in and there you go. You can take your stock on and off as many times as you want and not have to deal with that spring flying out or God forbid, and I've done it, it happens, when you're going to put it all back together again you do something and you crimp that spring and ruin it. It happens. So this helps to eliminate that. Um, nice blocky shape too. I, I like this style instead of the traditional fence styles for here and here. Uh, I like it. It's it's different, and I like that media blast finish to it. Now you're gonna want to anodize these. These are raw casting or raw forgings. They're not you know 
there's no finish on them, there's no anodizing on them, so you're going to want to protect them. And anodizing is the best method overall, and what I would probably do is go ahead and take care of my polishing, because I will polish the hell out of this to a mirror finish, and then clear anodize it. And you can anodize at home, there's plenty of ways of doing it. So, yeah, instead of getting it in, in raw like this, by getting the media blasted, it gets rid of all the, the swirl marks from the, uh, the tool paths. So, that's our lower, and it's $82.00. Add $5 for the, uh, the bead blast finish, and yeah, it's great. You get 100%. You're going to need to have this shipped to an FFL dealer, and you'll have to pick it up from them and do all your paperwork and everything else. So this is a legal, legit, 100% lower receiver. No 80% trying to skirt around the, the laws and that kind of stuff. We're going with straight, legit, 100% uh, lowers. But if you do choose to, at some point... They have 80% lowers and the jigs and so forth where you can mill it out. I don't have a milling machine or access to a milling machine, so I'm not going to go that route. So with this same website here, I'm going to go with the upper receiver from them so it'll match up quite nicely. And again, pay the extra 5 bucks, get the, uh, the, the bead blast finish. These things look really nice. Um, they're a little bit different. They're cut a little bit different. You can see the um, the brass deflector here is a different shape. The housing for the forward assist is a different shape. It's got a whole different profile, and it works well with that lower. Um, you still have your, your hole here for your um, ejection port cover, so you can still put that in. And, of course, you can get it in black Cerakote if you want to be non-pimp and just go with straight black and then go ahead and get them to Cerakote it. Um, I like the overall appearance of it. Like I said, it works really well with the. Um, oh, let's go back to the other picture. There is um, the cutout here for the um, the bolt stop or bolt release. It's nicely shaped. I like it. And this is just showing with the uh, charging handle, the forward assist, and injection port cover on. I would probably stay with the black furniture on that just simply because you want some contrast and one of the things that I, I see people do all the time is when they they refinish something and again I would polish this to a mirror finish clear anodize it and then spray my secondary color on top one of the things that I always do whenever I'm painting or whatever refinishing an AR-15 is whatever color you Cerakote or whatever on the main body of, of the uh, the weapon, I always, always leave the Picatinny rail section of the upper and on the handguard flat black. Um, it adds a nice contrast, but it also, if you're using iron sights, you're not going to get glare from, you know, a gold or a chrome finish to, or high gloss finish or whatever else. You're not getting that reflection. You're not getting that glare, and it's just going to help with your sight picture. So the price on this one is $123. It's, you know, it is what it is because you're getting a billet uh, style, nicely milled, uh, good-looking uh, upper receiver. And as you can see, it is 7075 T6 billet, hardened aluminum. So you're good to go with that. And again, I will make sure all the links get put into the video description once it's finished uploading. Now, let's move on to the barrel. I want to keep this a carbine, so we're going to stay with 16 inch barrels. And I went ahead and went with the Bear Creek Arsenal. You guys know I like, I like their company. Uh, the 16 inch 416R stainless steel barrel. And with that, it's a lighter profile, but it's M4 contour. And being that it's stainless steel, you can leave it as is, or you can take the time to um, to polish it up. I would polish it. If you have access to a lathe, it makes polishing a hell of a lot easier. Um, you can just chuck it up in the lathe and just run over it with uh, 400, 600, you know, 800, 1,000 grit sandpaper, and then just start using a, a buffing wheel. But I would definitely put a you know something in, like some tape around the area where the gas block goes, so you're not screwing with the dimensions of where the gas block goes. Um, as you can see right here, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's, you've got your um, your hole for your gas system is right there. So by putting some black electrical tape over that, uh, it keeps it dimensionally correct, and you don't need to polish that anyway. 
and probably a better idea not to polish it. But going with this, you get the one and nine twist, five five six NATO, uh, no flutes. It's kept relatively lightweight. There was a lot of good barrels that they had on here, but you're talking less than forty one dollars. Yeah, won't break the budget. There's a lot of other options out there barrel wise and caliber wise you can go with. I chose this one to stay within a certain budget range to keep the whole project before finishing under six fifty. So good starting barrel. If you don't like the barrel, it's easy to change a barrel on AR fifteen. You know, that's the, the joy of them. You can take it apart, take the barrel off, chuck a bad barrel on the garbage and put a better barrel on. They've got some really good options on here for upgraded barrels, but they're a little bit heavier. And I just chose to go with the Bear Creek um, M4 profile because we're going to use a 15-inch handguard on a 16-inch barrel. And I'll explain why here shortly. So, the handguard. I found this from uh, AR15handguard.com. And this is a 15-inch free float, super slim M-lock handguard. Not a bad looking handguard. Um, it's got some nice weight reduction cutouts. It's drop down here. So if you're actually using this for a DMR type build and using a larger scope, you can actually put it on there and the bell housing can drop down just a little bit. But nice looking overall, 40 bucks. Um, I will have to look at the, the um, Okay, never mind. Just couldn't see it in that picture. You've got the, the four screws down here and the barrel nut. So the barrel nut would actually go on to retain your barrel naturally. That's what a barrel nut's for. And then you would slide this over the top and line it up perfectly and then tighten down those four screws. It'll lock it in place. And that way you can get it shaped just right. Um, again, what I would do is polish this one out to a mirror finish uh, with a good buffing wheel. And then clear anodize the entire thing then come back in and probably Cerakote the top rail black. Another nice touch which is kind of difficult to do is if you take and tape up all of the outside edges of the actual handguard itself and if you can get in with some black spray paint or Cerakote or whatever your, your choice of finish is and once you put the, um, the tape on go ahead and cut out all your holes so the sides of the cutouts and the inside is accessible and of course you want to take your your screws out and you want to take out your um, your barrel nut then try to spray your finish on the inside to coat everything on the inside portion of it black it's going to add a nice shadowing and contrast to it and once you you do the interior of this and the top rail and Picatinny section in black. It's going to give a really, really nice overall finish and a nice contrast overall. All right, so we've got our upper, we've got our lower, we've got our barrel, we've got our handguard, and we'll just look at some other pieces parts. Um, I went with a standard Mo build kit from PSA here. Um, hundred bucks. Got your fire control. It's got all your pieces parts to completely build your lower receiver your buttstock your um, your buffer tube I would leave the buffer tube probably black but since it is already anodized uh, black there are ways of stripping the anodizing down polish it out and then go back and, and I wouldn't mess with a threaded section I would just go through and just the the main visible sections of the the main body of the tube strip the anodizing off re-anodize it after you, you polish it to a mirror finish clear and leave it or you can actually take the um, I don't know if I give you a good enough picture here so you're going to have a certain amount of threads that's going to go into your, your lower receiver and then your castle nut and your end plate they're going to cover a portion of that but what I would do is go from the threads here and I would strip this get rid of all of the anodizing off of the back of it and then polish it to a mirror finish clear anodize it and then the this is actually the bottom portion uh, it's upside down in the picture here but I would go back and, and do that part in black as well just to give that contrast again and since you've got your springs here for your detents um, 
can easily go ahead and, you know, the black one in the center is probably going to be for your uh, your selector, which goes up through your grip and into the lower. But you'll take one of these two and shorten it for the, um, the rear plug. All right. Since you're at the PSA website, go ahead and spend another 20 bucks and get the upper build kit. Now, I looked here, and they want an additional... $55 for a charging handle, forward assist, and uh, uh, your ejection port cover, and that's just a little bit on the expensive side. But for 20 bucks, you're going to get your your standard mill spec stuff here, and they're going to look just fine and work just fine. You're not going to use these four parts here. This is your barrel nut, your spring, your C clip, and your delta grip and uh, essentially this is your your takedown for your rear handguard so you're not going to use these four large round pieces here all you need is just the ejection port cover spring cover pin forward assist your c clip for this and this is an annoying ass little c clip be careful with it <laughs> the roll pin for your forward assist and your spring for your forward assist i i have multiples of these laying around because I've bought this same kit, used all the rest of the parts, and these just end up clogging up my desk. It'd be nice if you can get that. And I am I believe there is a kit from PSA that you can get. I, I used to work for them. I worked at two of the stores. And I'm pretty sure there is. I just don't have the part number in front of me. For a bolt carrier group, um, there are many options out there. This is about average for the the on sale. This was a daily deal. Uh, the nickel boron bolt carrier group. You're gonna find these anywhere from 80 bucks to 140 bucks, 150 bucks, depending on the coolness factor and the and the brand. So just a standard nickel boron uh, bolt carrier group. So you have that nice shiny silver on the inside. So once your your charge and locked and your ejection port covers open, you can see that nice shiny bolt inside. There are other reasons for using a nickel boron bulk air group, but we're going for the cool factor. All right, I'm going to skip one part. And we're going to go to the charging handle. This is from Moss Defense. I like Moss Defense. They got some cool stuff on their website as well. Uh, this is an ambi charging handle, so it can be operated from left or right side and rear, of course. But it's a nice dual latch, ambi, and... Uh, 25 bucks uh yes please the um, good deal uh so i would say go with that one for moss defense i said good company and for optics i went with the same one that i've used in several other builds because it has such a high review high, you know high rating on it the reviews and it's a one to four by 24 single focal plane illuminated uh, duplex dot for a standard carbine, this is going to be cool enough. This is going to be good enough for just average shooting. Most people are, are shooting their carbines at 25-yard indoor range, or they'll go to an outdoor range, and they might be shooting up 200 yards. But most people, realistically, who are shooting, and I, this is going to be a shooter. This is not going to be some safe queen. But most people who shooting their AR-15s are going to go to an outdoor public range or they're going to be an in, indoor range. In an indoor range, you're going to only get up to about 25 yards. So, realistically, this is going to get you there without breaking the bank. There are multiple, hundreds of thousands of, of ways you can go differently on your, your optics. This was, again, so that you can complete the project with a decent minimal budget. So, Again, the Primary Arms Classic Series. While you're there, go ahead and click that button right there for 20 bucks more. You get the uh, the one-piece scope mount, and you're good to go. That scope mount works on 30 millimeter uh, scopes or one inch. So once you've got it, if you decide you're going to change your, your optic later, you have that option of going with a one inch or a 30 mil. So you don't have to go out and buy a new scope mount every time. But it's going to bring us to the last piece that I want to add to this for a couple reasons, mostly for the cool factor. And this is from Moss Defense. Since you're already going to be on their website anyway, getting the charging handle, 
This is a six and a half inch fake suppressor. Well, I don't want a fake silencer. Okay. Well, there's a couple reasons why, and yes, this will fit. A um, couple reasons why I like this. It does add a little bit more weight to the front end, and it's going to help you when shooting a little bit. It's it's worth getting. Plus, it adds a cool factor. <coughs> Excuse me. Since this is an internal, not an external. An external is going to have the threads here on the very back. And what happens, you take off your muzzle brake and you put this on if it were an external. And it's going to add, this being a six and a half inch fake silencer, it's going to add six and a half inches or roughly six inches to the overall length of your rifle package. And yes, it's nice to have a longer package, but um, not a necessarily cool whenever you're playing with a carbine. And since the barrel that we have chosen is a carbine gas length, which means it's here, a mid-length is going to push it up to about right here. You can't use this fake suppressor, the, the internal one, with a mid-length gas system on a 16-inch barrel, because it just doesn't work. So what happens, instead of putting it on, and it extending out this way 6 inches, going on, on this end, it slips over and goes over the top of the barrel. So the actual um, threads are actually going to be somewhere in here. So what it does is it takes your 16-inch barrel and makes it look like you've got a 10.5-inch barrel with a silencer on the end. And when you combine that with a 16-inch handguard or 15-inch handguard, that means that um, uh, barrel, barrel, barrel. Uh, your handguard is normally going to stop right here and you're going to have about an inch of barrel sticking out the end and you know the fake suppressor is going to come out about what two and a half three inches or whatever on the outside it is going to add some overall length and that's okay but not as much as an external type thread or you know end type thread but it's going to allow it to slip underneath the handguard and looking at the dimensions here the inside diameter is 1.34 inches and the outside diameter of this 1.25 outer so this is going to slip underneath there and give you a little bit of space to the play with but it's actually going to uh, and they do offer this when it being that we chose this because it's in the raw they do offer in different barrel length or, or handguard lengths I just like the, the look of the 15 inch on that 16 inch barrel especially with going with the fake suppressor because that fake suppressor is now going to go underneath the handguard a few inches and it's going to look pretty damn cool at least I think so all right so recap and again 40 bucks for the handguard it's um 35 bucks for the fake suppressor. We're going to go back from the start here, and again, like I said, at the end of the video, once it's done processing, I'm going to go ahead and add the links into the video description, and that way you can actually click through. Again, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, so I'm not getting any money from this. So, the lower receiver, Hellfire Armory, 8250. Go ahead and spend five bucks more, so it's 8750, and get the bead blast finish. Upper receiver, 123 go ahead and add that five bucks in and you're going to be at 128 dollars for your upper receiver just go ahead and do it it's pretty cool and pull i mean this is pretty cool this is what i want to do uh, barrel bear creek arsenal 40 bucks 41 bucks and you know how much i like bear, bear creek then hop over to air15handguard.com and pick up the 15 inch ultra light super slim handguard for 40 bucks because it's not finished is why the price is so much cheaper because of the cost for anodizing and seracoding and that kind of stuff so 40 bucks there the PSA lower build kit with the Magpul Mo stuff you're talking about 100 bucks there now the 20 bucks for the upper build kit because these parts are not included in that your nickel bar on bolt carrier group for 100 bucks if this one's no longer on sale, then I, there's plenty of them out there for around 120 bucks all day long. So worst case scenario, you're going to add another 20 bucks on here, which brings your total up. Um, 
The current total for everything that I've got in here on this list is 626.17, not including shipping, not including sales tax, not including transfer fees, and that kind of stuff. But worst case scenario, if you have to pay another 20 bucks on top of that, then you're talking about from 626, you're going to 646. You're still under that $650 price point. Your fake suppressor, 35 bucks in stock. And while you're on mass defense, 25 bucks for your, your ambi uh, charging handle. And 130 plus another 20 for your optic and scope mount. And that's going to give you everything that you need to build a complete rifle, top to bottom, inside and out, ready to go enjoy. But keep in mind, since the lower receiver, upper receiver, and handguard are all three raw forgings they are not anodized so it is suggested that you actually take them even though they're hardened aluminum and all that cool stuff go ahead and anodize these if you're going to do it this way and do the pimp build like i'm planning on doing i will end up polishing mine down to a mirror finish and once they're they're they've got that nice glossy mirror finish correctly clear anodize them and you will keep a lot of that reflectiveness to it um, I will probably end up doing a gold powder coat and I'm not sorry not powder coat uh, a gold colored uh, translucent gold uh, prismatic powders uh, if you guys want a uh, link to them but this prismatic powders is a really good source for um, uh, you like powder coating stuff but there's other places you like on online for colors let me know what what you're looking for color wise and I will get some links for anodizing colors a lot of people out there use like the the writ dye or the cheap dyes you can buy at the grocery store don't do it they don't usually get a good solid color sometimes you get a good result sometimes you don't spend a few extra bucks get a decent anodizing dye the liquid dye to mix with your solution for your coloration and go that route and that's probably what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to gold anodize or the upper lower and handguard and then apply on top of that black Cerakote uh, in certain areas so that I get the contrast the way that I want it to so final recap you're at 626 17 before shipping before taxes and transfer fees and that kind of stuff because the lower is going to have to be shipped to an FFL dealer unless you decide that you want to go the route of an 80% lower which you're going to incur more cost because you're going to have to get the jigs and you're going to have to have access to a mill to correctly do this you might be able to get away with a cheap ass um, drill press but you're going to burn it up um, the reason why you don't want to use a drill press is because drill press is meant for drilling and going straight down and straight back up and when you start putting the side load of actually trying to mill with it you're going to put stress on the, the bearings and a, a method of which it was not designed to do and you, you're going to have to spend good money on the um, the mill table which is going to be your your screw leads so that you can traverse left and right forward and backward so that you actually can move it correctly um, there's just no other way around it you're going to spend more money doing the 80 percent version than you would on just getting 100 percent lower and paying a transfer fee somewhere and actually doing it a lot faster too um, your shipping times are going to be about the same and as long as you are not a criminal you can walk right in buy it and carry it home depending on your state's um, communist laws all right, guys and gals, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions for what color to do, I'm going to be doing gold and black um, two-tone with a nice, nice, shiny, high-gloss um, gold anodizing with a flat black uh, Cerakote for the trim colors. be going with black furniture, and we'll go from there. Thanks, guys, and we will see you on the next build.